This terrifying campfire story unfolds on the banks of Bucks Lake in Northern California, a popular camping spot. It was very chaotic and, and very frightening for the people that were up here. Among them, a pair of young buddies camping out for the night. 23-year-old Sheldon Stewart and Trevor Holminski, just 20. They had been camping a few times before. Trevor's mother, Allison, had no reason to believe her son would be in any danger when they went camping at Bucks Lake. He was wilderness trained and knew how to take care of himself. Graduating with honors from a long, grueling wilderness survival course when he was in his late teens. Uh, I spent 98 days in the wilderness. And then made a film about the life-changing experience titled Blue Crow. I was awarded the name Blue Crow because blue, which was for friendliness, openness, freedom. Winning the high admiration of his friends and family whom he interviewed for the film. I'm incredibly proud of you, Trevor. You have walked a path that many people four times your age haven't walked. And the things you have done in your short life are amazing. He loved the outdoors. He liked to get away from all the hubbub. He had social media accounts, but he never liked that everybody always has their nose in their phone. So he liked getting away, just him and his friends and the wilderness. Trevor loved music. He loved writing music. He loved playing music. He loved producing music. A brilliant wordsmith just had a really good grasp of English. He was a beautiful writer. And Trevor's sunny nature and sense of humor endeared him to anyone who met him. They did that. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor had just recently decided to follow a childhood dream and join the Marines. He had a lot of patriotic pride, and he was strong and smart, qualities that the Marines would look for. One of the toughest things to do in the world. Yeah, and he wanted to be special forces. But it's a choice that would ultimately change the entire course of his life. Because after being accepted into the military, Trevor wanted one last hurrah before shipping out. A farewell camping trip with his buddy, Sheldon Stewart. And that was one thing he wouldn't stop talking about. Trevor had seen his parents just a few hours before he and Sheldon were to make a two and a half hour drive to Bucks Lake. He was so excited to go camping with his best friend. His mom and dad could never have imagined the terrible fate awaiting their son and his pal. What was the very last thing you said to your son, Trevor? When we got into the car, Trevor walked us to our car, and Trevor hugged his mom goodbye. And I didn't. That's something I have to live with for the rest of my life. And it's not until well after the two young men had arrived at Bucks Lake that Mom Allison is suddenly struck by a strange feeling of foreboding. I had a moment of serious anxiety. I really was concerned about him. And I just said, oh, Allison, you're being ridiculous. But her mother's intuition would turn out to be tragically right on target. I wish that I could go back and say, don't go camping. Nothing would have given anyone a reason to believe that that camping trip would have ended the way it did. The grim mystery begins to unfold when firefighters respond to early morning reports of a raging brush fire at Bucks Lake, a popular Northern California camping spot where Trevor Holminski and his close pal Sheldon Stewart had spent the night. And as firefighters are trying to bring the blaze under control, they make a horrifying discovery. Sheldon savagely slashed and nearly unconscious. There were approximately 10 stab wounds on the side of his neck, and one was a little bit worse than the rest. Then firefighters find something else that makes them recoil in horror. Came across a hot spot, and it turned out to be a body. 
burned beyond recognition, lying in a campfire pit, smoke still rising from the charred skeleton. In a, like a fetal position. And investigators know immediately that the body hadn't been burned in the brush fire. How bad the body was burned, it would take more than just a regular fire. It would basically have to be stoked. This had to be intentional. Correct. This was definitely no accident at all. A fire had suddenly become a murder scene, and District Attorney David Hollister says investigators are scrambling. Getting the crime scene under control, figuring out what was going on, uh, how many assailants might be out there, um, and exactly what happened, especially at a time when we were trying to, to really fight a fire that we were concerned was going to take the whole forest. Hollister says there are more questions than answers. What weapon was used to perpetrate the crime? where it happened. We're up here in the woods. It's very easy to hide things up here. And the biggest mystery of all? Just whose body is that? It's pretty shocking, and at that time, it was very chaotic up here. Investigators assume it's Sheldon's pal, Trevor Holminski. But they're thrown for a loop when Sheldon regains full consciousness and tells them from his hospital bed that Trevor had attacked him with a knife and run into the woods. Took off from the camping area and he didn't know where he was. So now investigators fear Trevor could be a homicidal maniac who tried to kill his best friend and burned another camper alive. And he's apparently on the loose at Bucks Lake and was running through the forest with a knife. Investigators have no reason to doubt Sheldon is telling the terrible truth. What did you think of him? I thought Sheldon was a, a, a nice young man. He was very polite. He was soft-spoken. He was articulate. I think he had a very nice personality, was easy to talk to. An easygoing Oakland chef with a clean record and a good reputation. Had good friendships and good friends. And as Sheldon recovers from his wounds, he tells investigators a story about a camping expedition that turned out to be a real bad trip in more ways than one. He gives me some towels, a little piece of paper, and we take them, and we had a really good night. Sheldon tells detectives they ingested around 20 hits of LSD, otherwise known as acid, and also smoked pot. So it can be really aggressive. Both tripping out so badly that Sheldon says Trevor does something that shocked him. Like he was hitting on me, but he wouldn't come out and say it. Are you guys like kind of sorted in a relationship? No, we never had any type of physical relationship like that. It's always just been me hanging out with my best friend. He tells detectives Trevor was bisexual. But I never thought that he was attracted to me. He's never said anything about that to me until Trevor falls deeper under the influence of LSD. Sheldon quoting his friend as saying, Well, dude, we have a fire. All you have to do is sleep with me, and we can go on with the rest of our lives. And I was like, I can't do it, Trevor. And Sheldon claims Trevor tried to rape him, then attacked him with a knife as he was trying to go to sleep. I just kind of opened my eyes and looked behind me like this without moving. The next thing I know, he's stabbing me in my neck. They said I got stabbed in the neck like 10 times. I don't really remember all that happening. I just remember him standing over me, I kicked him, and it stood up, and he realized that the knife wasn't sharp, and he just stood and pulled out another knife. Sheldon says he and his best friend wrestled each other for the knife. I didn't realize that he was bleeding also, I knew I stabbed him in his arm probably at least two times, and he just left. Then walked away? Yes. You don't know where he's at? No. I haven't seen him in hours. But I don't know he's probably still somewhere on the campsite. While Sheldon is bleeding profusely from his neck and clinging to life. I laid there for a couple hours. They don't want to bleed to death. And there's a couple times I blacked out and I woke up I'm still by fire. I thought I was in hell. But is Sheldon's real hell just beginning? An autopsy of the charred mystery body at the campsite soon reveals it's Trevor Holminski, who's suddenly gone from possible villain to tragic murder victim. When you find out your son is gone, how does that hit mom? You're just in a fog. You're just 
in a fog. You have no idea how to get up and put one foot in front of the other. It's absolutely devastating. It was life changing. He was taken from us because someone was selfish and decided that he didn't need to be here anymore. A body has been found burned beyond recognition in a fire pit. Sheldon Stewart lies in a hospital bed recovering from multiple knife wounds. He says were inflicted by his best friend, Trevor Holminski, while they were camping. At first, detectives fear Trevor may be on a murderous rampage at Bucks Lake, a popular campsite in Northern California. For all anyone knew, Trevor was still running around the woods. But when detectives receive autopsy results for the charred body, it's a shocker. It's Trevor Holminski. Trevor had actually been stabbed in his back and chest before being incinerated in a campfire pit. What ultimately was the cause of death? It could have been either of the stab wounds, either the one to the front or the one to the back. And now Sheldon goes from victim to main person of interest in Trevor's murder. You knew that something was up with a friend. Yes, he was basically our, our number one suspect. Investigators are already suspicious of Sheldon's story that Trevor attacked him after he rejected his sexual advances when they got high on LSD and pot. And now they believe Sheldon's own knife wounds are self-inflicted. What was odd from the beginning in looking at the wounds is that most of them were superficial. The cuts also appear to be too uniform to match Sheldon's claims they were suffered while he and Trevor wrestled for a knife. Something that you wouldn't expect to see if there was a fluid, violent uh, fight where both parties are moving around a lot. You're saying all the wounds were in the same exact spot? Right in the same spot. Detectives hit Sheldon hard. Did you stab yourself in the neck? No. Then there are the slash marks on Sheldon's wrists, which he admits were indeed self-inflicted. Why did you cut your wrists, though, when you woke up? Because my leg was bleeding. I thought that I was going to die out there, and I was really sad that my best friend just left me there to die. and stabbed me in the neck. I was screaming, and nobody came to help me. I was about to die out there. I knew that was going to make it out of there. But investigators think there's another reason Sheldon might have wanted to commit suicide. Once it became apparent to Sheldon that he had killed his friend and he was reaching for what story might work, and I think he went back and forth between, I'm going to try and get away with murder versus I'm going to try and kill myself. They also don't believe Sheldon's claim that Trevor had attacked him. Based on the evidence, it was clear to us that the only person that used a weapon was Sheldon. He stabbed himself in the neck. He cut his own wrists. He also stabbed his friend. Each step of the investigation uh, led us to a conclusion that while Sheldon may have come across as a very nice young man, uh, on that evening, he was nothing short of evil. But Sheldon denies murdering Trevor when detectives turn up the heat. What if I told you that you were the one that was attacking him with a knife. That's a lie. I didn't attack him first with a knife. Sheldon also denies he burned his friend's body. Did you start that fire? No. I didn't start the fire. They suggest Sheldon may have killed his friend in a moment of homophobic fury when Trevor allegedly hit on him. Maybe you were upset at him for trying to advance on you sexually, and you got upset at him and stabbed him. That's not what happened. But investigators believe they now have all the physical evidence they need to support their allegations after finding Trevor's wallet and ID at the crime scene, as well as the knife used to kill him. We returned to the scene with the detectives and some metal detectors and other equipment, and were able to find the location where uh, Sheldon had buried not only the murder weapon, but some other items of evidence. And confronted with the overwhelming case against him, Sheldon finally admits that he did indeed kill his best friend, but he says only in self-defense and only when Trevor had pleaded with him to do it as he lay bleeding to death. Did you ask me to put him out of his misery? I did. What did you do? I don't know. I had a knife and I just started swinging. 
So he asked you to put him out of his misery? Yeah. And what did you do to do that? You were being compassionate at that point? Is that what was going on? Uh, yes. Where did you stand? I don't know. I closed my eyes and it just started swinging. And so I stopped hearing him move. Before building a bonfire and throwing Trevor's body on it. Why did you burn Try to cover evidence? I don't want to put a personal life in what that figure. Yes, I saw the fire. I was sitting next to him, contemplating what just happened, what I did. And I saw the fire. Could Trevor's death have been in self-defense? No, uh, not from the evidence that, that we saw. Um, there was no other stab wounds that, that Sheldon had on him other than the ones that it was pretty clear he inflicted himself. He basically killed him out of mercy? Yes, that was the, the end story and the one the defense took in the trial. But it fails to convince the jury, Sheldon Stewart being found guilty of murder one and sentenced to 26 years to life, which is of little consolation to Trevor's still grieving family. He didn't get to attend my wedding. Um, he won't be there for the rest of our lives. The world is not going to be the same with that. It gets easier as time goes on, not that I miss him less or think of him less. Maybe you're just used to the gaping hole in your heart. And exactly what happened between best friends Sheldon and Trevor at Bucks Lake that night may forever remain a mystery. Do you have any idea what Sheldon's true motive was? I don't. I, I think what caused Sheldon to do this is something that was known only by two people. Uh, and Trevor took that to his grave. Uh, Sheldon, I, I just don't think, is in a position now or at trial where he could tell us what really happened. To keep the spirit of their son alive, Trevor's parents have decided to spread a little bit of his ashes everywhere they travel in the world, from Australia to Barbados, as well as Germany and even some at his sister's wedding location.